Good morning, everyone. It's Anifa Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Today, I would like to talk about concentration and distraction. And I believe that a lot of my clients, certainly, and people I talk to and friends and family talk about meditation or prayer. And I think the most common question I get from people is, how can I help my mind concentrate? I can't, I'm so distracted. And I thought this is an important topic to discuss today because you know that I work with meditation and mindfulness, but I also work with grief recovery. And there's a reason for this. I've certainly noticed in my own life, as well as the people that I work with, that if the mind is busy working through a grief experience or anxiety or worry, which in grief recovery is all falling under that category of grief, it's not able to meditate easily. And yet so many of the people that I meet will say, oh, teach me how to meditate or I'd want to meditate with you and I, I want to do this. I think I'm just not doing it enough times and maybe I have to create a particular space and time for it. And creating space for meditation is really important externally and internally. Now, a lot of people have understood that I should have just a meditation corner and meditation room, a uh, uh, a space in my home or a space outside my home that allows me to have space that this gives me that sense of meditation but whatever we're doing outside we also need inside too and you would think that well if i'm in that space then of course my mind will be in a clear space too but people carry things with them and what is often carried is emotions or our emotions so i thought i'd start today with a couple of quotations to help you understand this idea this first one is by Crystal Andrus, and it says, feel the feeling, but don't become the emotion. Witness it, allow it, release it. This is so interesting, right? Because if we're looking at an emotion, and first of all, we need some work to understand our emotions. And this is, again, from my perspective, grief recovery has been very handy for many people, and myself too. But let's say someone is trying to meditate they really feel like if i can meditate i'll be able to get over these emotions that are in me and there is a certain logic that's needed that i'll just put this emotion on the side while i meditate and then i'll get back to that emotion but do you know the back of the mind is holding on to i'm going to do that after right so that idea is very prominent in a lot of people's minds and maybe you will have some familiarity with this thinking so then the meditation becomes mechanical. I need to sit for this much time and this is how I concentrate and I'm going to focus on this word. Many people will use something like OM, but all sorts of things. Some people will focus on an image. Some people will think of a concept and focus on that, sometimes colors. And what happens is if the mind is already preoccupied with an emotion or experience, it will not be able to create the space needed for true meditation. And this is interesting because then people often feel that I need to be meditating to be in that space. When I'm meditating, I feel great, but every other moment is not. And this is about making this experience part of our lives. If we understand the brain, we can understand what kind of things are kind of cluttering it and doesn't allow that space. So, you know, sometimes people might have heard of that term monkey mind. And that is often what happens in the mind that there's a thought and then another thought and another thought and another thought. And one of the strategies is just don't jump onto any of those thoughts. And when we look at this quotation, the idea is don't become the emotion. It's like, oh, I'm so tired is sometimes a thought that comes through people's minds. I'm so tired. And then they think it and it's like, I'm tired. So they've already identified with that emotion. I'm so stressed, I'm so unhappy, I so don't like this situation, then I identify with that thought. And this is about understanding that there's the thought and I release it. It's, I am not that, I just see the thought. And so we come back to things like concentration and distraction. So let's say someone sits down in meditation and says, okay, this is the word I'm going to focus on. And this is, I'm just going to concentrate on this word. And lo and behold, concentration is happening and suddenly the mind moves to something else and the mind then thinks oh my god oh get back get back to concentration this is the word you were focusing on let's bring it back to here because now you're distracted now notice it's thought that is thinking both the thought 
is thinking, I need to concentrate, and thought is thinking, I'm distracted. And if you were the observer behind all of it, you would be observing thoughts, motion in general. You would be noticing that here is thought concentrating. Here is thought moving to distraction. Here is thought noticing its distraction coming back. And this is an art, right? Because if we can watch this, this art, a lot of people have experienced, many people really focus their mind that I can't let it get distracted. And once it's distracted, I just can't focus, right? So this idea of I just can't focus, you might have experienced it. And many, many people do. And so even a moment of focus feels, oh, I did some meditation. But only a person who's mindfully attentive to how the mind is thinking can actually observe this thought process and this motion of this thought. And this is the art of meditation, is recognizing these thoughts. Again, I will say that it's so much easier when space is cleared in the mind by clearing emotions and understanding that relationships are actually so fundamental in our lives, relationships with anyone. So it could be relationships with your boss, your coworkers, or your spouse. And if you're not in a good situation in one of those areas, it's not going to be easy to meditate. So those areas can be focused on first to understand how to declutter the mind with the things that are constantly floating around, then come back to meditate because the true benefit of meditation does require some space in the mind. Now, in terms of getting a little bit of peace from meditation by making some time and space for meditation time, you will get some of that benefit. If you're looking at the true benefit of meditation, and that is union with a space that's beyond thought, it's not easy to go beyond thought when the thought is holding on to memories, experiences, feelings, emotions, and life, <laughs> our own human life, and what has just happened yesterday, or what someone said yesterday, or someone's doing today, what I want to do tomorrow, what I have to do today. All of those things clutter the mind, and unless we clear that first, we won't allow, or our minds will not allow that easy movement into meditation. So I came across this other quotation. It's by Yuval Noah Harari. And it says, if I identify happiness with fleeting pleasant sensations and crave to experience more and more of them, I have no choice but to pursue them constantly. And this is so true. If you will think about this, a lot of people in the world do this, that this is making me unhappy, so I'm going to pursue happiness, whichever way. Some people will look at it through sensuality or sexuality, monetarily, moving in terms of locations, moving into a new house, moving friendships. These friends were really good to me, but they don't make me happy. And uh, so now I, they're not good to me and I'm going to move towards the ones that make me happy. All of these things happen constantly and this is throughout life. And if we pay attention, we recognize that, oh, it's because my own mind is not happy right now and it's seeking happiness. To sit with the not happy first through contemplation, through reflection, through a bit of self-inquiry, that is the magic that allows the space of meditation. This meditation, again, we're trying to get to this space that is beyond words, beyond thoughts, beyond experience, but certainly magical. I'll just say it's... there is no word for that space because it is beyond words but it is such a space of understanding and truth and compassion and endless love that i would strongly encourage it for everyone the only thing is is try to do the the preliminary work first otherwise it's much less easy and i'll say much less beneficial and then finally i thought i'd finish with this uh, final quote by thich Nhat han and this quotation says to meditate is to sit down on the bank of the river of sensations and identify each sensation as it arises. It's identifying a sensation, not the word of, wow, I, I am angry. It's feel the sensation of anger. Right? I am frustrated. Feel the sensation of frustration. That is 
meditation rather than I am this. As soon as I identify with it, I am this, I've lost something. That's not the meditation that will bring that peace that we all deserve. And we're all part of, and it's all part of us, and it always has been, but we are now rediscovering it through things like mindfulness and meditation. I definitely feel that there's a profound difference between the two. Mindfulness has a particular process. Meditation does not need any concrete process, but it does need a strong foundation. The strong foundation is that clearing space in the mind to be able to do this work. I'd written down something that I thought was so beautiful. I had written this idea that uh, meditation leads to a timelessly sacred space. This is meditation, a timelessly sacred space. And I so agree with that. It, there is no sense of time. Sometimes I can sit for what I think is five minutes and it's been an hour. And sometimes I can sit for an hour and it's only been five minutes. Same idea, but the experience is so fantastic. Time just does not factor in, period. And this is such a beautiful experience. And I believe that most of our minds have become so very cluttered that we could all benefit from this uh, understanding. And I hope that this video has brought you a little bit of understanding today about concentration and distraction. I wish you a fabulous day ahead. And I hope you remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day, everyone.